Today on Upfront, Senator Tammy Baldwin in her first in-depth TV interview on the Toma VA troubles. Next, Baldwin on the mistakes she says her office made and what she's doing to fix the problem. Plus, Madison Police Chief Mike Koval on why he apologized repeatedly after a white officer shot an unarmed black man. And the race for state Supreme Court, Rock County Judge James Daly on why he says he's the better choice. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. The first official review of what went wrong at the Toma VA Hospital is now in. A medical investigator's report released last week found evidence of unsafe practices in the prescribing of narcotic painkillers. Medical staff at the hospital are accused of prescribing so many opiates that vets dubbed the place Candyland. A Marine vet died of an overdose at the Toma VA. Since the allegations came to light in January, the offices of Senator Tammy Baldwin, Senator Ron Johnson, and Congressman Ron Kine have all been criticized for mishandling or not acting soon enough or aggressively enough on a whistleblower's report of trouble at Toma. Baldwin's office has taken the most heat, and late last week, her office issued what it called an external review of its handling of the whistleblower complaints. The review said mistakes were made, but there was nothing unethical, and there was no effort to suppress information. We're joined now by Senator Tammy Baldwin. Senator, it's good to have you back on the program. It's good to be with you. Well, let's just cut to the chase. Yes. Did your office drop the ball on this one? You know, what my external review found was there was nothing willful or unethical, but mistakes were made. And these were mistakes in judgment, mistakes in communication, and frankly, mistakes in missing the opportunity to move more swiftly uh, on the Toma case. And I accept the responsibility for the mistakes that were made in my office, and I'm holding staff accountable for those mistakes. Um, but we are redoubling our efforts moving forward to get to the root of problems at the Toma VA. You know, on January, uh, in, in early January, after a media report exposed um, a, a lot of information that we didn't have prior to that report, um, I called for the VA to open the investigation that you just reported on. That investigation is looking into overprescription and a retaliatory atmosphere at the Toma VA. I called for the Department of Justice to look into three deaths that have occurred uh, uh, among veterans who were treated right. at the Toma VA, as well as uh, allegations of drug diversion and corruption. And the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, at my urging, is holding hearings not only on the overprescribing at Toma, but nationally throughout the VA system. Let me uh, go back to, to your office's handling yes, of this. Um, it's an external review, but the review is being done by a Democratic attorney you hired. Why should people not be skeptical when he says nothing unethical was done, there was no suppression of information? Why shouldn't people say, well, that's a guy she hired? You know, first of all, I, I wanted to understand uh, when I saw the severity of the issues at Toma, having read the January investigative journalism report on Toma, I wanted to understand exactly how my office had handled a whistleblower, actually two whistleblower complaints uh, that came into my office with regard to Toma. And I wanted to be able to answer questions that were being raised in the media, et cetera. It was important for me to do an external review. It was important to me uh, that um, uh, I get to the, an uh, the bottom of, of the situation. And as a bottom line, my office, my staff, serves the people of Wisconsin. I have a great reputation for constituent service. And I want to renew that reputation. So it was very important to me to get to the answers. And, um, you know, I can share with you uh, what actually happened in our office. And, and I do want to talk about that in a moment. Yeah. But again, back to the point, I mean, it is a, a, an attorney uh, that you hired doing the review. I mean, that, an attorney with a great uh, uh, depth of experience in counseling uh, congressional offices and in particular Senate offices. So it was, in my mind, the, the right place to go. Uh, let's talk about what did or didn't happen. And, yeah. and, and there's been a lot of talk about this uh, Inspector General's report. Yes. Um, and, and talk that, that it was given to your office in late August. August 29th, I believe, was the date of yes, 2014. That is... When did you first see that report? 
I first saw that report after uh, the January 8th investigative journalism report that revealed uh, uh, a lot of information that uh, uh, my office staff hadn't had prior to that. None it, of that it, was it, communicated to you before January. So the, the investigative journalism report uh, noted, among other things, that there were actually deaths of, of veterans um, that had been treated at the Toma facility. One death occurred in the Toma facility. Um, this was information that no one had, and I immediately, you know, uh, proactively called for the VA investigation that is now ongoing. But let me retrace back because these are important issues. Uh, my VA caseworker was working on a whistleblower case who had brought forth allegations about overprescription at Toma. In the course of that, he wrote to the Toma VA. He wrote to the VA central headquarters in Washington, D.C., asking for review and investigation. And he did so to the investi um, what's called the Inspector General's office. In the course of communication with the VA Inspector General, on behalf of our whistleblower, he learned that there was an older report that had just been uh, uh, finalized. He learned that the uh, Inspector General had not found evidence to move forward with accusations of wrongdoing or negligence. And he learned that there was high levels of, of uh, opiate prescriptions, but they were taking remedial action at the facility and in the regional network. He received that report at the end of August, as you note, on August 29th and shared it with the whistleblower and ultimately closed the case. I think that we needed to have, one of the mistakes was not looking further at the problems that were revealed in that report and not asking questions like, were these remedial actions satisfactory? Because with 2020 hindsight and the report that came out in January in the media, it's very clear that any remedial action that the VA and the Inspector General were taking was insufficient. Senator, did you know that, that Ryan Honnold, the, the whistleblower in this case, was contacting your office repeatedly late in 2014 and saying, have Senator Baldwin do something about this? Why is she going to do something about this? Right. Did you have any awareness that was happening? I did not have an awareness that um, Ryan O'Connell was contacting our office, but I, did, um, uh, but I do want to say that his case was mishandled, and I am very sorry uh, and take responsibility for that. This whistleblower called our office. He had valuable information to share. Um, he should have been given the IG report, and I think that that was a big mistake on the part of my office, and he shouldn't have been dealt with rudely. Another mistake. You're, you fired uh, Marquette Baylor, your uh, uh, state deputy director, I, I believe is, was her official title there. It, are, are you saying this was her fault? Is that why she was fired? No, it, actually it's not why she was fired. Uh, there were long-term uh, problems with her performance uh, as the casework supervisor. Uh, there were issues relating to uh, uh, putting the systems in place to effectively manage and track those cases. These were long-standing issues. Certainly, uh, the Toma case is one, of, one example uh, in some of her handling of that, but this was a much longer-term set of issues. Why was she fired and Mike Helbig, who was handling Veterans Affairs in your office, not fired? He's been moved off of that now, I understand. Yes. But, but he wasn't fired, given the fact that Ryan Honnell was communicating directly with him at times my understanding is, why wasn't he fired? Well, first of all, I, you know, as I said earlier, the, um, my external reviews showed that we did a lot of things right as well as made a number of mistakes in the handling of this. And the early uh, work on a whistleblower case that came to our attention in, um, in uh, March of last year uh, led to the, our VA caseworker taking very appropriate steps to first contact the Toma VA, ask for an investigation and a review into overprescribing, then writing to the VA central headquarters in um, Washington, D.C., and asking for review and an, an, an investigation, then writing to the inspector general and asking for review and uh, inspection. The mistakes um, that I think the caseworker made was uh, believing the assurances of the inspector general that remedial actions were being taken on the overprescribing issues and, um, and just, uh, uh, how would I describe it, um, you know, basically having faith
faith in their conclusions that there was no wrongdoing going on at, at the VA. It's so clear after the media reports came out in early January that there were deep-rooted problems in, in Toma and how the Inspector General could have found such high uh, levels of prescribing didn't um, constitute wrongdoing within the VA system is very disturbing in retrospect. One other question about your aide that was fired, Marquette Baylor. Um, there are reports that there was a, a payment offered to her, a severance uh, deal of some sort. What, what can you tell us about that deal? Yeah, so the, the Senate has an office of Senate Employment Council. The Senate Employment Council uh, works with Democratic offices, uh, Republican offices, and has um, a standard severance uh, agreement uh, uh, package that is put together when an office is terminating an employee. That is what was uh, before uh, Marquette Baylor. It is um, completely standard for uh, situations such as this. Is a confidentiality going, agreement also standard? Yeah, the, the, um, there's standard language um, that, again, is given to senators of either party uh, when they have to deal with a termination in their office. Final question on this subject. Uh, as you know, there were people saying, we want to hear what Senator Baldwin has to say about what's happening at the Toma VA, but for weeks and weeks, you didn't say anything. Is, is that what people should expect from an elected public official? Um, well, I think what's really important is that when I speak, I have full knowledge of what I'm speaking about. The last thing I wanted to do was make assumptions. Uh, so it was very important for me to complete an external review of my office's handling of this matter, to know exactly who knew what, when, what exactly was happening. And I felt it important to wait until I had that uh, before I, uh, you know, I didn't want to speculate. I wanted to be able to convey facts. Two more questions, uh, unrelated subject. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about what happened in Madison with the, the police shooting of an, as it turns out, unarmed black man, mm -hmm. um, white officer involved. Uh, we've seen protests. We've seen uh, uh, the community that's, that's upset and I think concerned about uh, not only the shooting but maybe other issues in Madison. What's your reaction to what's happened there? Well, first of all, my, my heart goes out to uh, Tony Robinson's family and his friends and loved ones. Um, it's, it's a tragedy that's happened, uh, you know, very close to home. Uh, the community uh, response and dialogue uh, seems, from what I've heard, to have been um, respectful and um, what I hope uh, will show promise of being productive. Uh, you know, there's a, an external review happening by the State Department of Justice, as is the law in the state of Wisconsin. We need to get the um, the, the facts of this particular case, but I have to say it, it's so troubling that we're seeing this across the United States and we have to do better. Final question, and it deals with uh, your Republican colleagues in the Senate, 47 of whom sent a letter to Iran, uh, sort of weighing in on the prospect of a, a nuclear treaty with that nation. Uh, what did you think about that? It, it is unprecedented as far as I can tell uh, uh, and so um, uh, so injurious to our efforts to find a, a, a diplomatic uh, solution to Iran's nuclear ambitions. Um, I, I remember when I started as a, a new congressperson years ago talk, uh, learning that in foreign policy, um, we stand together. There should be no partisan divide. And certainly, we can fight like cats and dogs on, on issues of domestic um, importance and show the partisan differences, but we ought to speak with one voice. And this politicization of foreign policy, and especially when the stakes are so important and so high, we have to do everything we can to prevent Iran from um, uh, getting a nuclear weapon. We need to exhaust the diplomatic uh, route before we look at other things. And they um, really threw a wrench into that um, that I find inexcusable. Senator Tammy Baldwin, Democrat from Madison, we appreciate your time today. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. And you can see my full interview with Senator Baldwin on our website, WISN.com, including why she offered a settlement package to that fired aide. Next, the Rock County judge challenging a state Supreme Court justice. And later, the shooting of an unarmed man in Madison. Why the police chief apologized.
Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.